What's going on, y'all? So What's going on, y'all? So we are back again for another episode review of Love and Marriage Huntsville. This season six, episode say seventeen. Um, so lady like let me just tell y'all right about now i don't really have that much energy my sinuses have taken me completely out um so i'm just trying to get as much done tonight that i can get done for y'all i'm trying to catch up um so this episode review probably will not be that long because again i don't really feel that well but let's just get into it um the episode picks up where I left off with Melody talking to um, Kiki about the crime stopper thing or whatever. And Kiki basically ain't sweating it. <laughs> Even though she was doing all that jibber jabbing real talking real fast and all over the place. Kiki not sweating what's going on and what's being said. Because um, basically she's like, I got my lawyer on my side and I got the truth on my side and people don't know everything that really happened. And once I'm vindicated, then all the people going to be saying something. Truth be told, at the end of the first episode coming back last week, they said that, you know, um, she has not been charged with anything yet. Um, so at this point, we don't know what's going on. But honestly, when she said, Mel was like, was that you in the video? I cannot say nothing because um we, we went under legal stuff. I said, you know what, Kiki? You keep on saying that plead the fifth type of stuff because that is what I'm hearing. And, um, you know, you do what you got to do that's going to protect you, okay? Honestly, I feel like that was her in the video. I don't know exactly what was going on. I don't know what was exactly taken and how involved or whatever. Honestly, the first time I heard anything about Kiki being on Crime Stopper or anything happening in that sense with her in that way was when I sent the preview for the um, mid-season finale. That's it, the mid-season. That's it, you know. But um, <sighs> Melody just want her to get herself together. That's basically all, um, you know, because she even told her that, you know, Tiffany brought it up, and she was really confused about the fact that Tiffany brought it up because she thought her and Tiffany was somewhat okay and made amends and all that stuff. And at this point... We just realized that Kiki and Tiffany are just not meant to be friends with each other. Cordial, cool. But friends in the same circle, not necessarily. And that's fine. And I just want them both to wake up and realize that. Just because y'all on the show together don't mean that y'all really have to have any association. Doesn't mean that y'all have to be cool with each other or anything like that. Y'all could be cordial. You don't have to have drama. You can stay out of each other's business. But, of course, we know that that's not going to happen. Because Tiffany is all up in everybody's business, okay? Um... Even though Tiffany did invite Kiki to her, uh, you know, baby reveal, which I was surprised by that. Maybe it was in a contract or whatever, but if I'm so concerned about somebody coming in and stealing something out of my house or stealing something from the place where I'm um, putting stuff together for my little gender uh, baby reveal or whatever, I, I wouldn't invite them. If I got all this negative stuff to say, I just would not invite them, and I just don't understand why people keep playing with these reality shows. Can we get some real reality sometimes? Because you cannot say, in my honest opinion, that you are okay with being around someone just as long as they don't take no locks or they don't take no centerpiece and all this stuff. If you're okay with bringing, being okay, be around somebody and, you know, you're okay with them, why are you constantly judging? Because that's what she does. Granted... Kiki does stuff or Kiki has something that people are talking about understandable, but nobody on the cast was really talking about it like that in such a negative, negative, negative way as if Tiffany was. And we know where it's coming from, from Tiffany. Tiffany don't really like Kiki. Okay. And that's just what it is. I'm just like, be real. Don't invite the girl. And Kiki, I wouldn't accept it if she invited me. What we found out is that she didn't show up. I don't think she showed up to it, even though she said she would. Um, Tiffany and, uh, uh, Stormy was actually talking because Stormy is helping throw the gender, the baby revealed or whatever. And, um, you know, she said she invited everybody, including Tiffany. I mean, yeah, it's including Kiki. And, you know, she said all of what she said about that. Anyway, who cares that, that, that just did it. If I'm okay, like I said, if I'm okay with somebody, I'm not going to throw shots at them, especially when they're down. You know, if they really didn't do anything to me, I'm still not going to throw shots at them, even when they're down. You know what I'm saying? And that's literally what she do. Throw shade at people and all that stuff. And I, I, I don't know. Some shade is good, but some shade is just like, what's the point? 
And at this time, what's the point? Meanwhile, you know, Kiki said that she was she was she was clean. I know people gonna think that I'm not clean and I'm not, uh, I'm I'm clean. I said for real, no shade. I ain't coming. In. I, I'm I'm just really asking the question. Are you sure? Okay, just making sure. But at the same time, you know, she did invite Tisha. Tisha is the only one that has not RSVP, and you know, she still got an issue with Tisha. At least Tisha still got an issue with her. And at the end of the day. Their, their issue is very minimal and very minute, okay? You didn't get a chance to speak at the Black Expo. You wasn't part of the uh, comeback group, and who cares? At this point, I wouldn't even want to be associated with it because it's so... Got, I only heard negative things about it instead of the positive. So, you know, can we just move on from it? Moving on, um, <clears throat> Stormy had asked her how everything's going with the baby ever since she... Um, had the baby and basically Tiffany is stressed out. She got to worry about her other two kids. You know, Lou has a son. She has a son. They're like teenagers. They're about to start school again. Got to make sure everything is okay with that. All of them together. Plus the baby that needs 24 hour care, you know, all of this stuff. And Lou is out on the road and he's not home helping nothing. So basically she's going through a lot. Could possibly be going through postpartum depression. It's understandable. And at this point in time, you know, I do feel like it's kind of messed up that Lou ain't there. But at the same time, Lou probably like, well, I didn't really want this baby. You the one that wanted this baby. Okay. So therefore, you take care of it. You do what you got to do with it. And um, deuces. That's just all that it's going to be. You know, but I do like the fact that as much as I can't stand Tiffany, I like the fact that Stormy is there for her. You know, they had their little issues. They figured that out. And Stormy is just basically like, if you need anything, you know, just let me know. Okay. You got somebody here to talk to and all that stuff. Cool. Let's get to Tisha and Marceau right quick. Tisha and Marceau gets on my nerves because I feel like they are full of crap. All right. They are really full of dog doo-doo and it makes no sense whatsoever. Unless they are trying to have two properties I don't understand why are they renovating the home that they moved out of and doing all of this expensive renovation unless y'all finna sell it so that y'all could try to get some more money than what you would originally have gotten if it was the regular amount without the new stuff when you were supposed to be over here building this big ass um, Scott Manor. You know what I'm saying? So it's like the money I feel like it's a waste in a sense. You're putting money into this house rebuilding it or renovating it so that y'all can move back into the house but i thought that y'all was supposed to be putting money towards getting scott manor up now listen i understand that you can't have multiple properties at one time but it just seems to me that it'd be difficult for them to do both because as of today scott manor is not built and so i'm like is scott manor off the table and we're just going to go ahead and focus on renovating the house that you already have. Um, and I feel like at this point, that should be just the only thing that y'all do. Because I feel like they're bleeding money. All right. T should come up in there. And they get into this whole conversation about, you know, Marcel spending so much money. And I got an allowance of $3,500. And you got an allowance of $500 a month, $5,000 a month. And I spend the money on my car. You up here trying to make it seem like I be spending so much money and all that stuff. Do you know how much that make me feel? That make me feel some type of way, okay? How dare you come up in here and make it seem like I be spending all this money or whatever. When I want to do something, it's just like this. But then when you want to do something, it's okay because you can spend it on you. You can spend it on your kids. I don't care what you do with your $5,000 because you can just throw it away. You can burn it for all I care. But if I want to do something for me with my $35,000, it's a problem. I said, sir, all of that wasn't needed. And I feel like Hit Dog is hollering. Okay, first of all, you wrapped your car in that ugly yellow. I'm going to need you to go unwrap it and wrap it in something else, okay? But at the same time, I was just really confused about why he was getting so pissed off. And you heard that he had um, a court case or whatever that was going on. Um, he said, you know, when somebody tried to sue, they don't expect you sometimes to counter sue. And that's just what happens uh, when when you get into stuff or whatever and i'm sitting here like so was you the one counter suing or did you the one that gets sued you know like which which one is going on but i just felt that whole conversation was just really uh it was off-putting marso the fact that y'all said that y'all got allowances and stuff i don't know how i feel about that but he just 
He rubs me raw so much. And then they had this meeting with the flexures, right? They had a meet up with the flexures, okay? And I didn't understand this part. Break it down to me. Because I just feel like this was a part that was just put on for shows to in, incorporate and put the flexures in and introduce them as a couple for real, for real on the show. We didn't sing them multiple times throughout the seasons. Um, and now we're seeing them more. And now they have their own confessionals. And so at this point, it's making it feel like they put this thing to introduce them together as a couple, as the new couple to the show. Um, because I just feel like this was a bunch of fabrication and a bunch of boo-boo just to make some drama to introduce them a little bit. Because who really, y'all really tripping over the fact that y'all was not invited to the expo? One, Tisha and Marceau is acting like they don't know y'all. So if they acted like they don't know y'all, I wouldn't even want to be a part of that shit. That's one. Second of all, they say that they know of you. They know a little bit about you. But then want to say, well, I don't know what you do. So that's why I didn't invite y'all to be into the expo. But yet, you see throughout the season that Chris, at least Chris himself, did real estate. So you could have brought him on if you really wanted to. And then... You know, when he said, well, I know Chris does real estate, and I thought that you was just around being his pretty little wife to Nell. Now, see, that would have made me um, pissed off as, as well. Nell had every right to be mad because you basically putting her down as if all she's good for was just to be his arm piece. And that he don't, that she can't be a businesswoman as, uh, as, as, as he is. He's a businessman, she's a businesswoman. And, you know, um, Chris has said that. He told Marceau and then what exactly she does. She runs a, a daycare and been running it for the past, what, 27, 29 years. And, you know, um, that's a business, okay? That's actually a successful business to be having it long, 20 going on 30 years almost. That is a successful business, okay? And all it takes is for you to just inquire. Just be honest and just be real and say, we weren't thinking about you guys being in the expo because we weren't thinking about you guys, period. That's just what it is. Second of all, we didn't even know you like that. Third of all, you were associated with somebody that we were not associated with at the time. And so, therefore, we didn't want to have no drama. We didn't want you in there because we didn't know what you knew and we didn't know what you was going to say. That's just what it was because that's part of what they brought up. They had an issue with the fact that, you know, Nell, whatever, and Nell was cool with, um, you know, Mark, um, what's her name? Melody. That's basically what it was. And I'm sitting here like, how are you having an issue with the fact that, you know, they cool with Melody, Melody which they also is cool with Martell. You didn't have a problem with Melody or Martell being there at the expo, nor Stormy and everybody else who was involved, right? Um, But at the same time, you want to base it off of the fact that they have association with them. That's with a specifically male. That's messed up and that's childish as all ever. Because the same male that y'all was begging to be at this expo so that your expo can do well. Let's just be real about it. And then you want to you wanna downgrade her to basically say that everybody there has had a business and been in business for a long time. Maurice been a lawyer for a long time. He's had a credit card business for a long time. I've had a business for a long time. Stormy has a business for a long time. I don't want to be with somebody that just sells t-shirts. And I'm sitting here like, wow, the way that you just talking about, you know, somebody just selling t-shirts as if that's all that Melody does. And then talking about something you don't want to pay nobody because you're not going to pay nobody to speak. And, you know, all of that stuff. But yet, y'all was begging for Mel to be there. You were begging for Mel to be there, but now is I don't know what she does, and all she does is pay, uh, you know, basically um, belittling her to just selling T-shirts or whatever, um, forgetting the fact that she did have a successful company to a certain extent when she was with Martell, and she is a successful businesswoman after Martell on her own that she already started. And we can see that because the, uh, the the proof is in the pudding, the fact that she ain't struggling and asking nobody for nothing, okay? Martell is the one getting evicted from homes that he can't buy, all right, that he's renting, not leasing, renting to lease, not leasing to own. He's just renting, okay? 
it ain't nothing wrong with that. But let's not, let's not, let's not, let's not downgrade this person. It just felt very fucking sexist and misogynistic. And to do that, it made me mad. <clears throat> oh, I'm so irritated. Because I cannot, I have not felt this way in a long time, y'all. In a Oh, and it's that time y'all hear it in my voice. Uh, and I have post-nasal drip as well. So that's, oh my God, I'm just so messed up right about now. But anyway, it pissed me off to hear them say that about me. And y'all know I'm not the biggest male fan because truth be told, I'm not nobody fan on this show. That's just 100%. But I can give uh, uh, unbiased criticism, props, and all that stuff where it needs to be. But... To see Melody sit there talking to Kiki and for Kiki to feel some type of way about the fact that Melody was the only one that actually came up to her, actually reached out to her to see how she was doing after that whole crime stopper thing and that Tisha was the one who came to her last about it and that she felt some type of way because she's like, when you was going through your stuff with Marceau or when Marceau was going through his stuff or whatever, uh, anytime you're going through something, I'll reach out. And even Melody was taken up for Tisha. Melody was like, well, did you reach out to them when Marceau was going through what he was going through or whatever, the court case or something like that? And she was like, I don't reach out to Tisha about nothing concerning Marceau, but still, I didn't reach out to her about nothing, you know? And Mel was like, exactly. You cannot expect her to reach out to you when you haven't done the same thing to her, okay? And plus, you also have to understand that y'all are still in the process of trying to rebuild y'all cousinship, rebuild y'all friendship. And so, therefore, yes, she might not be ready to just go ahead and be like, oh, my God, Kiki, you okay? I respected Mel for saying that because that is true. That is true. When you're in a, when you didn't went through so much with a person, and you didn't got so much drama, and y'all in that process, very early stages of trying to uh, amend stuff or whatever, you can't expect them to always be there in your corner and jump up in your corner and all that stuff right away, like they do or did in the past, because it's just not going to happen. You know, you guys are still building. You have to be patient or whatever. Um, and that's all that she was trying to say. And Mel wasn't dogging Tisha or anything or making an excuse and being like, oh, well, Tisha is this and you know how she is and blah, blah, blah. She wasn't talking negatively or nothing. But then you get to this dinner or this little get together, or whatever, with Nell and, um, you know, uh, uh, Chris. And y'all basically like, I mean, I ain't finna pay this girl to talk. And, you know, somebody that just sell T-shirts. But you wanted her to talk. You wanted her to get up there to speak. You And that's the thing. How are you being so contradictory? First, you don't want to pay her, but you begging her to come there. You begging her to be on the panel. You wanted her up on that stage. You wanted her up there to say something because you knew that that would be the draw. You know Mel is the main draw to this whole fucking show at this point. It's not y'all. Okay, people don't give up. If this show goes off, if Mel leaves this show, nobody cares about it. I'm just going to be real with y'all. Um, nobody cares about the drama that's going on with them because it's not all of that. And some of it seems so freaking manufactured. Um, they tried to do episodes when it's no male involved and it was kind of boring. Even though male ain't really giving much now, but people are out here watching for her. I don't know how, that's just how it is right now. That's just a truthful thing, okay? Um, I don't know if they can carry a show by themselves given the fact that People don't really like Tisha and Marceau, okay? People don't like Maurice at this point, you know? So, hey, it is what it is. Meanwhile, um, of course, Nell had to come back and say what she had to say to, uh, not Mel, but Nell. She was going to carry that bone, okay, because she felt some type of way. And honestly, I would have felt some type of way, and I would have said something too. But I would have said something right then now, because I think she did say, you know, Mel, uh, Mel is much more than T-shirts, so don't even do that. But it's time for Tiffany's little, um, you know, a baby reveal. She gets to the place, and the place ain't ready. Um, and so you got Stormy up there helping put things together. You got Kimmy coming out, making sure everything is cool. 
Uh, they trying to figure out if Tisha gonna come. Tisha did RSVP. Mel shows up. Mel was like saying hi to everybody, and she was like, "You heard me say hi to everybody." And when I said hey to Stormy, she was acting like she was um looking up in her purse or whatever. And so therefore, that's somebody that don't really want to say nothing. So you know, don't make it seem like I didn't acknowledge you. I said, "Let it go." Um, just just whatever, because then they start talking. Mel let it slip out that she had already seen the baby. You know, um. But then they get to talking about the fact that Tisha didn't RSVP yet. So they don't know if she's going to come and that whole issue. So at that point in time, uh, Melody didn't know the drama that happened at the Espo uh, when it was prior to getting ready or whatever because she wasn't there. She only came in towards when it opened up to the public. And so, you know, they talked about the Tiffany issue with Tisha and the Expo. And then they talked about Stormy's issue with Tisha, uh, Tisha and the Expo and Marcel and the $100 and all of that stuff. And Kimmy said she didn't even know that they had to pay it until Maurice said that they paid it already. So she was in the dark as well. We gonna find out next week that it was other people that didn't have to pay. <laughs> and Maurice gonna get mad. He said, you know what, I'm gonna have to talk to Marceau about this. Cause y'all doing bad business at this point. Meanwhile, they got that off the whatever. Nell comes in and she sits down and talk to, um, Melody and tell her what was said. Yeah, girl, I went to we went to go um talk to Marceau and Tisha to see why we wasn't at this black expo. They was acting like they ain't know me and all that stuff and know that I was in a daycare and that we was business people and all this stuff and whoa, whoa, whoa. But then they start talking about you, girl, talking about so we ain't paying nobody to speak and all this stuff and you know, up there to speak about what some t shirts and all this stuff. And this is what set Mel off and rightfully so. And somebody could possibly say, Oh, y'all was just they doing too much or whatever. But no, this is Marceau. If you've been watching this show from the inception, you know that Marceau is very misogynistic, very sexist, very old school thinking. You know, basically, if he had it his way, women would basically just be in the house taking care of the kids. And that's it. They wouldn't be working, wouldn't be doing nothing, you know. Um, and that's how he treats a lot of people in his life. We saw how he treated his wife, and it took forever for him to at least let her to even come into the office with him. You know, took her for, took him forever to even let her, and the fact that we had to say let her um, continue school or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And then for him to basically downgrade what it is that Melody do to just some t-shirts or whatever, and I'm so glad that Mel said, well, your business has t-shirts. Your wife sells mugs and got mugs and stuff whatever that she does okay so what business does she do is that all that y'all do okay i had my business since 2008 don't try to play me all right and i am never finna try to get into something and want to speak at somebody's expo who is in a five point something million dollar lawsuit for fraud i said checkmate that's all you got to say right there that is all you got to say right there and but then mel just went on and was just like i am just so tired of Certain black men trying to downgrade and degrade black women and their accomplishments and what they need to do and all this stuff. And, you know, she went in and I was 100%. Everything that she said at the end of that episode was 100% real, 100% truthful, and I agree all the way with it. Marceau needs somebody to just take him down a peg of three. And she said, you know what, everything that I'm saying right here, right now, I say that shit to his face. And I said, I know. <laughs> and I can't wait. But uh, anyway, if I missed anything, that's the episode, y'all. I apologize. I don't have that energy. I'm sitting here, baby. I'm trying to breathe through my mouth because my nose ain't all the way clear, baby. And <laughs> I just feel so... And I got to go to work tomorrow. I have to go to work tomorrow. I am so mad. Ugh. I really want to call off and I can't. But anyway, y'all tell me how y'all feel and I'll see y'all later. Peace.